Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for those of you watching on Facebook right now and uh, the interwebs. We appreciate it. This is going to be an excellent candidate forum. Tonight we have with us the candidates uh, that are here tonight. We have Brian Wingett, Travis Gibson, and Melvin Cleveland. So thank you gentlemen for coming and participating this evening. Uh, the rules are pretty simple. Uh, we're going to keep uh, this gentlemanly. We don't have any ladies up there tonight. Uh, but no interruptions, no talking over each other. You'll have three minutes to answer each question. Uh, there will be questions from the audience after we ask some uh, pre-selected questions, a little bit more general questions about who you are and why you're running. And so we're going to get through those first. And again, thank you all. If you aren't sure about uh, how to submit questions online, you can just do that in the comments section. Uh, those of you that are here, if you can fill out the cards that are at the table in the back and make their way up to the green table, uh, we'll get those ready to ask at the appropriate time. So, again, thank you, everybody. Uh, by the way, my name is Josh Tetons. I didn't introduce myself. I'm a local attorney here. I practice in Belmead, and I'm very excited to have uh, the opportunity to moderate this forum. All right, without further ado, we will begin, and we're just going to go in the order uh, as they are seated here on the stage. And we've got a microphone. If you gentlemen could just pass that as you speak, talk closely into it so that we can make sure that everybody hears. First question up, please provide us with an opening statement. Tell us about yourself and why you are running for the city council. Brian, you're first. Good evening. I'm Brian Wingett. I've lived in Bell Mead for most of my life. I graduated from La Vega High School in 2005. Then I went off and joined the military and the Air Force for a little while. Come back, got married, have four kids, and I decided that I wanted to run for council to help give back to the community which I've lived in my whole life. And I want to push for growth and beautification in Bell Mead. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Gibson. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Travis Gibson. I am um, been a, 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 a resident of Bell Mead for over 20 years. I've been married for 25 years. I have five beautiful children and two grandchildren. And back in 1995, when me and my wife first got married, uh, we were looking for a place to move to and to raise our family. And I could have moved anywhere in, in McLennan County, but I chose to come to the city of Bell Mead because it was a, I, I saw the potential that it had. It had my, my wife's grandparents lived in Bell Mead for a long time, so I kind of knew the neighborhood. And so I decided to move to Bell Mead. And in 2015, I was approached by uh, then council member Kevin Wilson, and he asked me would I be willing to run and serve uh, on the city council for precinct two. And without hesitation, I told him yes that I would because there's no better way to give back to the community than serving on the city council. And so I was elected in 2015 and I've been reelected uh, two other terms. And this is my fourth time running. And the reason I ran this time because I was encouraged by people in my community. Uh, they thought that I was doing a good job. They really liked the, the representation that they were getting. And one of the first goals that I set out to myself when I accepted to run for city council was that I wanted to leave Bell Me better, in a better position than I encountered it. And so that's one of my main goals is to leave Bell Me better and in a better position than when I first encountered that back in 1995. And I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Thank you, Mr. Cleveland. My name is Melvin Cleveland. I've been to Bell Mead since I got out of the Army in 1972. In and out almost all of my life here, seems like. Raised kids here. My grandkids are here, and they're all going to school here. So what, what I'm planning to do is just keep going ahead further and further as I can, and as the council will vote. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Next question. You pass that mic back. Uh, back to Mr. Wingett. Next question is, what do you consider to be important milestones for the future development of the city? Uh, 
as my uh, what's important to me on milestones for the future development is uh, growth. I want to see more commercial businesses come so that we can help Bellmead grow, have more stuff. As everybody sees right now, it's hard to get in and out of Bellmead with all this construction. The more businesses we can get brought in during this, the less we got to leave outside our community and spend money in the other neighboring towns. And I'd like to keep everything here locally as much as we can. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gibson? Yeah, I'm kind of like Brian uh, to that aspect. Uh, one milestone would be to see the everything that's put into place, the plan, actually come into fruition. And what I mean by the plan is uh, improving the infrastructure of the city of Bell Mead. And like Brian said, we do, Bell Mead is a, has a lot of potential that we haven't even begun to tap into yet. Uh, and, and with improving the infrastructure, that's going to bring economic development. And that would be a big milestone to start, to, to start seeing these things happen, like the beautification of Bellmead Drive, uh, bringing businesses in. And when we can reach that point, uh, the, the potential and growth is unlimited. Thank you. Mr. Cleveland, I'll ask the question again. Anybody that's just popping in, uh, what do you consider to be the most important milestones for the future development of the city of Bellmead? If I'm elected, I, I intend to s work with future development in the city and do more to get people involved in what's going on in this city. No more people than what's in this audience needs to be here. All right. Thank you, sir. Back over to Mr. Winkett. Next question, this is probably one of my favorite questions on the list. Uh, the city does have an aging infrastructure. That was mentioned a minute ago. How do you propose to address this issue? I don't know we saw that during the uh, snowpocalypse to some degree. Uh, we're seeing that with construction and whatnot. But uh, again, the question, how do you propose to address the aging infrastructure here in the city? I want to help modernize it, everything we can to bring things more up to standard codes nowadays. That way we don't have old pipes that are going to rust or break. Let's get new in. They got all different types of materials out nowadays that are better than when the infrastructure was built years ago. If we can get all that brought in and get the infrastructure brought up, as Mr. Gibson said, that will help bring other people in with a new infrastructure built own everything it will just help us grow more as a city if we can get everything a little more modernized even if we can get water meters or gas meters to where they're automatic red kind of like our electric meters get everything brought up in all aspects yes uh, the the question says that uh, the city has a aging infrastructure which we can all agree to that and with the the development, the population of the city of Bellmead is steadily growing. And in order to support the growth of the city of Bellmead, we have to improve uh, our city infrastructure, which is water, sewage, roads, streets, uh, telecommunications. We have to come up to come up to age. And with the improvement of infrastructure, it's going to bring economic development. And with economic development, you bring jobs to the city and bring more residents to the city. Now, when you're thinking about infrastructure, you have to understand, you have to look at the budget. And one way that I want to improve the infrastructure is start having infrastructure projects. Uh, we have to find the funding and the financing. Now, funding and financing are two different things. Uh, financing is, is borrowing the capital to pay for the improvements because you have to get revenue somewhere. And I was looking uh, at the city of Robinson, and I saw what they did with uh, Walker Partners, and they had a street rehabilitation program that they implemented yearly. And so we, what we need to do is identify and assess uh, streets and things that need to be improved. And we need to come up with a plan to provide the proper resources and proper funding to get those the infrastructure improved. Because that's the only way that we can keep up with the times. We have to improve the uh, city infrastructure. To address it to start with is we need more money is what it boils down to. Where do we get it? Maybe taxes, 
Maybe not. I'd rather not see taxes. I'd rather see it come from some other places. And that way we can do what we need to do in the city. That's my thoughts. All right. I might watch that up. All right, question number four, gentlemen. Uh, ultimately, this is going to be a money question. So, Mr. Cleveland, good transition there. Uh, what are your thoughts on employee compensation for the city employees? And I'm going to set it up a little bit. Uh, per capita, Bell Mead is one of the busiest cities here in the central Texas area between the police, fire, public works, calls, uh, you name it. Uh, it is nonstop here in the city for its employees. However, the pay scale consistently ranks as one of the lowest for its peer cities surrounding us here in Central Texas. So again, what are your thoughts on employee compensation moving forward? I am in full support of compensating our employees. If you don't take care of your employees, our town will not grow. You have to have employees that are willing to go above and beyond to get the job done and if they're not being compensated in the way they think they should or anyone else does they're going to start slacking at their job and when you're slacking at your job results don't get seen so you got to be able to compensate your employees properly in order for you to be able to grow as a community as well Yeah, I'm uh, with Brian on that, that answer because we, we have to be competitive uh, for employee compensation. That's the bottom line. And if you look at it, you know, one of my main priorities is public safety. And we, you know, we, we're just not competitive. And so we need to go back and look at the budget to find, like Mr. Cleveland said, you have to have resources and you have to have revenue to provide competitive pay. Uh, because public safety is really important to me. That's one of my main priorities and one of my main issues. And we just don't pay our police officers what they're, what they're worth because they're overworked and underpaid. And I've always advocated for public safety here in Bell Mead. Uh, you can go back and check my voting record. I'm, I'm proud of the way I voted. And we just have to be competitive because from the top down, I mean, you look at it, we can't, we're real top heavy. And there's nowhere in the world that we shouldn't pay those people that go out and protect and serve our citizens on a daily basis, no way we should not be competitive with surrounding uh, municipalities. And so in order to do that, we have to reassess the budget. And right now we're in the process of the budget. The budget is being reviewed right now. So you go back and you look at compensation, you look at revenue and different general funds where we can get the revenue from, uh, which brings me back to 2015. Keep me up with the time. I know we got three minutes. You're doing good. All right. Now in 2015, that's when I first got on council. And it was recommended by then city manager, uh, Bo Thomas, was to, he explained to me, you have to, property taxes, that, that generates revenue, okay? And what you want to do is you want to increase it just a little bit at a time, so you want to have to, you know, all of a sudden you have to raise the taxes up so high where it's a sticker shock on the price. So back in 2015, we actually, the council voted to improve a, a two cent tax increase because we were currently at $29.86, I believe, and it was going to prove by two cents. That two cents equated over just $13 additional on your, your yearly uh, taxes that you pay, okay? That revenue was, and you can go back and check the budget on it, that revenue would have, it would have generated $76,000 that would have went to uh, public safety, okay? But we had, uh, the mayor at the time, Gary Moore, went back and did a, a rollback election, uh, went out and got the required signatures to do a, a tax rollback, which cost the city roughly about $7,000. And so that kind of set us back. You know, if we had to took the advice, and we, we hired city managers to guide us in the proper direction, if we had to took the advice then, I think we would be in a better situation now uh, because it has to come from somewhere. So we have to be competitive with the pay. almost forgot <laughs> what the question was. Again, the question, uh, for those of you out there who might have missed it, ultimately, what are your thoughts on employee compensation? 
Well, I believe they need to be compensated for what they do. Yes, definitely. But we're starting from behind on our infrastructure. And we got to take it slow and get it moving up there a little bit at a time. We just can't do it all at one time. We don't have that kind of money. And that's my thoughts. All right, we're cruising right along, gentlemen. Uh, question number five, again, starting with Mr. Wingate. What makes you stand out from the other candidates in your precinct? I don't want to sit here and say what makes me stand out over my point, uh, other opponents because each one of us are all going to bring something different to the table and ain't none of us the same. But I will say that I am younger. I am very eager to help Bellmead grow and prosper into the town in which it can become by helping growth, beautification, and being here for our citizens the best way I can. By that, hopefully being elected as councilman in Precinct 5. Mr. Gibson. Yes. What, what separates me from my opponent, and I'm never going to bash an opponent, never have, never will, but I bring experience to the table. I was elected back in 2015, and the citizens approved of the job that I was doing because I worked for the people in Bellmead. It's the citizens and the council and the city manager that trickles down. I'm, I understand the budget and process. Uh, the first year I was elected, it took me a little time to kind of understand. This is a big budget when you're dealing with millions of dollars. But I understand the budget process. I understand how city government is actually ran. Uh, and then that separates me from my opponent's experience and leadership. All right, question again, Mr. Cleveland. What makes me stand out? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm retired. I have lots of time I can spend with the city, with the employees, and get to know them better. And basically just learn the city inside. All right, gentlemen, this is going to be the last question before we take questions from the audience and anyone that is watching and listening online. Uh, the last question for the group right here is, what is one major issue you wish to work on if elected? Beautification is one of my major issues. As I ride around Bellmead, which I do on a regular basis, you see yards where grass is two, three foot tall, or there's a bunch of debris laying out, trash on the sides of our road. It don't make us look good when people are passing through and there's mattresses laying on the side of a road, um, recliners dumped. I wanna help us clean the city up so that it helps us become more of a destination spot because people ain't gonna wanna stop where the town's looking run down. They wanna see it all grow and everything be pretty looking, everything else flowers, whatever we need to do down our main strip with our beautification project we got going for Bellmead Drive um, and all that. I just want to see Bellmead beautified. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Brian on that. I do want to see uh, the beautification of Bellmead, but you have to prioritize uh, what's important. And the main issue for me right now is uh, public safety. I had a student of mine that uh, Googled Bellmead today, right, and it came up to 2020, 2021 is the second worst unsafe city uh, to reside in. Uh, I know when someone's looking to go to move to a city, the first thing they're going to check is the, the safety, how safe is the city. Secondly, they're going to check the, the school district that, that's in the, that particular district. And you, you have to, we have to be competitive with, with our pay. And so right now we're, we have a, had an 80% turnover rate uh, in a year and a half, which that's, that's, we have to do better than that. Uh, we also have to be pay competitive pay, and we have to hire, but not only hire, we have to retain highly qualified professionals to, to, to protect us. 
and also provide them with the resources that they need not only to, to protect the citizens of Bellamy, but to also protect themselves where they can make it home at the end of the day back to their families. And so that would be my number one priority is the public safety. And then it would be the infrastructure because you have to have infrastructure. But I think number one, you have to, you have to have, the citizens need to be protected and feel safe in their home and their community. I agree with Mr. Gibson on that, making it back home. I've got a son-in-law that's in law enforcement, and I want him home every night. So that's one, one project, but I'd like to work on the streets and the infrastructure that we need in this city. Bad. So that's where I stand at. I'm going to add kind of a follow-up question based on, on y'all's answers, uh, and we'll start again here with Mr. Wingett. Uh, but we, we've just heard about beautification. Uh, we've heard about public safety. We've heard about infrastructure. How do you envision the revenue coming in to cover all of those costs and expenses? One way to help cover those expenses is to look for grants. There's always grants out there that the city can get. You can also look at more commercial businesses moving to Bellmead with part of the growth. You're going to get more taxes for more businesses if you're getting them all in. But I think the main place to look for would be grants before you would look at taxes because nobody wants to see our taxes increased. And, that, and Brian made a good point on that. No, no one wants to see taxes increase, uh, but the revenue has to come from somewhere. It's just not going to just pop up out of the blue. So, and like I always go back to 2015, uh, if we had a just, there was a two cent increase, right? When it went from 29 to $31 uh, property tax rate, 13 bucks. You know, I spent that today at lunch, $13. Uh, so we have to go back and reassess our budget. Uh, we have to see where we can reallocate funds to what's important uh, because we do have we have a the budget has always been balanced but i think you know grants and you have to go look at the taxes and like i say no one wants to increase the taxes but it's, it's it's pretty simple i tell when i'm walking i tell my constituents it's pretty simple math right so we can increase the tax revenue just a little bit 13 bucks not a lot and i'm pretty sure i'll agree with that you can increase it a little bit so we can provide the services that the city of Bellmead needs. Or you can choose to, to keep the tax base low and continue to just do pay as you go. You know, like the, we talked about those streets. I travel Concord every day, all right? Uh, we need an infrastructure program. I, I travel four or five times a day up and down Concord. But what do we do? Grants is an option. I know lately we've been looking into grants. But you have to, you know, look at the tax base, and you also have to just find. You have to look at that budget to see where we can reallocate money because your budget. And I just learned this just recently, man. Your budget drives the city, and we have the money. We just have to allocate it to what our priorities are. What's more important? Question again, Mr. Cleveland. I ask ultimately was where does the revenue come from? Where does the revenue come from? to cover the cost of beautification, infrastructure, public safety, et cetera, that we've talked about tonight. I know one of the things that we definitely need to keep our roads better, that Mr. Gibson was talking about the roads, we need bigger signs. Those signs need to go bigger. The truck drivers can't even see them. So we definitely need that to be addressed there. And anything, Mr. Cleveland, more specific to revenue, whether that's taxes, grants, budgeting, anything of that more specific about revenue to cover the cost of those projects? About me? R revenue. Re revenue. I don't really have a thought on that one. 
Um, I'm going to take a moment. I've got, I've got one question that's come in from uh, the audience here, and uh, we'll ask that in just a second. But I do want to remind the folks that are watching online, it looks like there's a good number of you. Uh, you can submit questions on the comment section on the Facebook Live post, and uh, we encourage you to do that um, so we can ask some more questions to these candidates. And those of you that are present here, please ask some more questions. You've got a captive audience here at candidates, so now's the time to uh, make, them, make some promises for you and follow up and make sure they're keeping them if they're elected. So we've got a question from Ryan Powers. Ryan asks... How do you propose increasing drainage infrastructure throughout the city? So Ryan Powers is very curious about drainage infrastructure. We'll start with Brian again. Is there any way we can find, is he talking drainages in our sewers or drainages in our bar ditches going along our roads? I'm going to, to help say, with the flooding. I'm going to say any and all for Ryan. Any and all drainage. One thing, for example, Mr. Gibson said he travels Concord four or five times a day. You got bar ditches over there. They're deep. Flooding happens bad, bad over there when it rains. One thing is to get our, all of our drainage ditches nice and cleaned out, dredged out, whatever we got to do from our public works department to get to where we can get water flowing better. I live on Hogan Lane. Those drainage over there, water backs up. I can't tell you how many times in the last 10 years just on living on Hogan Lane, I've seen flooding from one side of the curb to the other or all the way up into our yards just to where the drainage needs to get better. And that's all part of where we answered about our aging infrastructure on helping to modernize and help improve all of our systems and getting the allocated funds from budget or grants or wherever we can to help with the drainage for there or the drainage they have over their own Concord and Precinct 2 with ditches. Anything we can do just to help that from getting the allocated funds just to help modernize and bring everything more up to date. Yeah, speaking of drain, it's raining now. Uh, Ever since I moved to Bellamy, we've always, and when I moved to Colonial States, we've always had a problem with the, uh, the, the, the rain backing up, not being able to properly to, to drain off. And what that goes back to, as Brian uh, relegated to, is it's the infrastructure. We have to go in and we have to improve our infrastructure because on Concord, for example, I can speak to that, those ditches, I mean, it's a small, it gets clogged up with trash and the water, it has to go somewhere. But I think a lot of that came back when uh, it was prior to me getting on council. It was, it was a while back when, when Woody Butler came and he built those homes and it, it wasn't properly, the, the drainage wasn't properly put in place, but the council at the time allowed it to happen. So we're seeing the, um, from that poor choice, we, we're seeing the, the repercussions of it. But it goes back to infrastructure. We have to update and improve our current infrastructure. And like I said, it goes to clean water, sewage, roads, streets, drainage, that's all included. And to answer Mr. Powers' question directly, we have to, you have to fund those. And it goes back to analyzing the budget, uh, seeing where, how we can allocate different money and start on projects. And that's one thing I want to go into this next term is to establish yearly projects, whether it's street rehabilitation, focus directly on the drainage issue, uh, but it has to come through infrastructure improvement. Repeat the question. The question again from Mr. Ryan Powers was about how to address drainage, water drainage throughout the city. How would I address drainage? First, you got to, you got to start with the base on it, and then come up with new curbs and gutters or new culverts. Would be the first thing to do. And then you start paving your roads after you replace all your sewers and your pipelines. And then work on drainage after that. Okay. All right, I have another question. Uh, this is from Natasha Frank. Natasha has two questions, and we're going we're gonna to take them one at a time here, I think. Uh, what ideas do we have for the sewer system 
in Belmead. So another drainage type question, but specifically in regards to the sewer system in Belmead. I'll just I'll let you keep the the mic. We'll start with Mr. Cleveland this time. You got the mic. Any any response to Natasha's question about ideas to work on the sewer system? That's the same as the, what I just got through saying is the drainage system, your sewer system's all involved. And we are working on getting a new one in. It won't be long, hopefully. All right, Mr. Gibson. Yeah, that's sewer a, the intercepted line. We, we're currently working on that, and we've been working on it for quite some time now. But uh, for Natasha, the, the sewers, that comes with uh, up, upgrading and improving the infrastructure, you know, getting everything current. Because when you keep the same old age infrastructure you're going to have a lot of problems you know you can look at the sewers at your home right if you don't drain the cap out on your toilet right you're going to end up having a high water bill which i learned my, that myself uh so we have to improve the infrastructure i have to agree with mr gibson on that one i mean you come back you got to start from the bottom you got to build your way back up you got to modernize it as we've been we've answered several times tonight uh about the modernization of our infrastructure we gotta you gotta get down get everything back new and updated to current specs because honestly i can't answer when the last time our sewage was done i do remember when i was a kid they did do it and that would have been 25 years ago at least when they updated just a portion of precinct four and a little bit of five and the rest of Bellmead has been neglected since then but it's something that we just got to take time after take time and get the budget to allow us to get to be able to modernize everything. Thank you, gentlemen. Next question from Natasha. She's curious about the stray animals uh, here in the city. If we have any ideas to take care of the stray animals. Kind of a code enforcement question. That is, Bellme does have a new ACO officer that has been with them now for a little while. And she has created a Bellme Animal Control Facebook page. They are doing everything they can do to help get the stray animals off the streets and not take them straight to the animal shelter. They want to help find someone to foster the animal, someone to help um, adopt an animal by doing that. That right there is a place where some of our budget can come in because we ain't having to pay the city of Waco to house an animal to help with all of our previous issues that we've been talking about. We do, uh, we do have all that going on with her. She has her Facebook page. She is always posting on there looking for people to help her adopt or foster or whatever means we can do to help get the animals off the streets. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I see the stray animals, and I, I know it's uh, becoming a problem, but it's a, a code enforcement question. Uh, but like Brian said, we do have a an, new animal control officer that's being proactive and trying to find a place for this, those stray animals to be cared for. But I think it comes back to the, the owner. We have to be, uh, if you're a pet owner, you have to be more responsible. Um, it comes down to accountability. Uh, also with the code enforcement, they're doing the, the doing a good job but there's always more that we can do because I see it all the time I had a friend that came through and that's the first thing he said when he came to my home is that he got a lot of stray animals which I had to agree with him on it uh, so we just have to be responsible pet owners and if we can get a, a program established and that's something we can address as a council during the budgeting process because there we can look at other cities that may have a similar problem and see how they're handling their, their stray animals and how they're keeping it under control uh, but it's a great question, and hopefully going forward we can look into that and uh, come up with a solution as a whole to kind of fix that problem. Mr. Cleveland, the question was, how do we tackle the stray animal problem? The stray animal problem. Stray animals? No, I think stray animals need to be controlled, but uh, along with, you know, a good place for them to go, especially if you have a group of people set up to 
take them in and care for them. I know several people that do that, and, you know, I'm all for that, you know. So that's my point. Okay, I'll let you hold the mic. We've got a, a good question from Facebook. Miranda Romero is curious about investing in our youth here in the city, investing in our youth, the children. She says, such as our outdated parks, the youth baseball and softball fields. What would you be willing to do on the council to invest in the youth? Well, right now we've only got one or two places for them to go in Bellmead. So I think we need to invest in play for our kids. Get them off of tablets so much. Because I've got two granddaughters, they spend hours on them. So, and I think they need to be out doing more things on the outside. Again, the question uh, from Miranda was, how are you going to be willing to invest in the youth, specifically with parks and recreation? Hey, well, I, Miranda, I'm all about the youth. I teach and I coach. Uh, so every day, I'm all about empowering our youth. And that's, the youth is that's really important because we have to, and for example, they've been doing a great job with La Vega Little League. That, that gives a, I was really impressed with their presentation the other night at the council meeting. And uh, I actually went out and visited with them to tell them they were doing a great job. Uh, I would like to see libraries. I mean, we don't have a library here, uh, possibly a recreation center, because all the kids have to go to either go to East Waco or Woodway or somewhere else, to, you know, re recreation. Because we need more things for our youth to be a part of. And we have to invest in our youth because the youth are our future. So. I encourage uh, Miranda to continue, to, her and her husband to continue to do what they're doing. And as a counselor, you have my 100% of support. Whatever I can do to invest back in our youth, uh, I'm 100% behind it. I agree with a lot of mis what Mr. Gibson just said. La Vega Little League, they said at the council meeting Tuesday night they went from 150 to 180 kids this year they're hoping by next year to be at 250 Samuel's the president out there and he's been doing a very good job on growing it I'm really hoping that we can get more involved like bring a little league soccer to Bellmead or basketball you go to Woodway they have basketball soccer baseball f football they have everything over there right across from the Arboretum the Woodway Rec Center it would be nice to get a rec center in Bellmead where we can get more sports to get more kids off the video games and more outside playing because that is our future and we need to help grow our future. All right, I'm going to make one last call for questions from the audience here. One last call for questions from our Facebook viewers. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to ask a final question of my own to give you a chance to get those last minute questions in. Um, how would each of you plan to encourage or attract economic development in the city? Uh, I know one of you mentioned about uh, trying to incentivize or attract more commercial businesses to come. How would you plan on doing that as a council member? Well, one thing to help with that would be you'd have to work with your city manager hand in hand. The city manager's there to help the city out with everything and help the council. The council tells the city manager pretty much what to do, votes on it. The, council, uh, the city manager guides and points us in what he thinks will be good for the city. He's on the usually the cutting edge of what all's coming in. For example, we got Stoney's Liquor now where Bell Mead is now no longer dry and we have a liquor store here. So now we are no longer going to Lacey Lakeview to spend our money. We are doing it in Bell Mead. More businesses. What I would like to see is some more sit down restaurants, reach out to places and get places like Bubba's 33 or Applebee's, anything from the other side of town to come over and have a sit down because we don't have but a handful of sit down establishments in our town. It's fast food or you choose the three or four sit down restaurants you have. I just want to try to work with the city manager on doing what we can do to help reach out and bring more businesses into Bellmead and help them prosper 
by growing in a community that's trying to grow and help the future of us. Yeah, Brian is definitely correct on that. We need to, first of all, we have to, we have to it goes back to the beautification that you spoke about, uh, beautification, uh, infrastructure, and we have to actively recruit businesses to come to Bellmead. We have to give them a reason to want to come and do business here in Bellmead. Uh, myself, I would like to, when I, when I come home from work, uh, I, don't, I don't like leaving out of the city of Bellmead. So I would like to have, a, you know, I know we have Lone Star, which they do really good food, but I would like to have more things that my family and I could, could go and enjoy without having to travel outside of the city of Bellmead. Uh, but we do have to work with our city manager hand in hand. He's been doing a good job going out and recruiting uh, businesses. And I think we, and you can correct me on this, Yost, uh, Miss Melanie, she's our community What's that? We, we, we hired a director of community service, the director of community development, and she's been doing a good job. So it just takes a, a concerted effort from everyone. And uh, as a council member, uh, we just have to work together to, for what's important for the city of Bellman. You have to put your differences aside and you have to do what we can do. But it would be great to recruit and attract businesses to the city of Bellman. And those are the avenues that we would go by to get that done. I don't have much experience about that one, so <laughs> I would take more or less the advice of the city employees and listen to what they have to say because that's what their jobs are. Good. Looks like we've got one more question from the audience. One more question. Last call, last call for questions. Facebook. Good question from the audience. Good question from the audience. There has been a lot of talk about projects, infrastructure, public safety, et cetera. Kind of a follow up to my question. Um, there's a lot of talk of spending money what about conserving it and tightening the budget? Uh, how would you plan on doing that? And I'll, I'll leave the microphone with you, Mr. Cleveland. Again, how, how, how do you conserve the, the city's money? Conserve it, tighten the budget versus spending money? Conserve it? Just tighten up your belt a little bit, and that way you can conserve. That's the only way I can tell you. The question again, Mr. Gibson, was conserving money, tightening up the budget, versus spending yeah. so much on these various projects. And, and who asked that question? Uh, there's not a there's not a name. Okay, well I, I, I know who it is. First of all, normally I don't take questions from from non-taxpaying citizens. That's number one. Uh, but we do. You have to. It's, it's, you have to plan real strategically because you want to. You want to be conservative, but you also want to have good things, right? I've, I've heard the different questions that's been proposed to, to the members on the panel tonight. Uh, so, from what I understand, people want to have. They want to attract businesses here. They want beautification. You want infrastructure. You want to keep up with the modern era. And it's, you, you, got, you have to spend money. You have to spend a little bit to get what you want to get. Uh, and like I always address people, you got a choice. You can either, we can conserve, we've been conservative. That's why we're kind of behind when it comes to keeping up with, you know, surrounding municipalities, we're behind. And, I, and once again, I go back to 2015. We could have been a lot further ahead uh, than we are now if we hadn't had a member to proactively go back and do a rollback election, a roll a two cent tax increase back, right? And so we hire, we have, Karen has been doing a good job. She's a, she know how to manage money. Uh, we got a city manager that's pretty good as far as budgeting wise. And you just have to be strategic in your planning. We have to really assess what does the community, what, what, do, what does the community want? Right? We've heard a lot of wants, but you gotta have, you have to find a way to support those wants by providing resources and you have to have resources and, uh, to provide those services. So we can continue 
Uh, we can continue to go as is and, you know, pay as you go. We patch up a pothole in the road and six months later we got to repatch it again or we can, you know, get a little bit more in and, and, and do a whole street rehabilitation project so that that whole street, you don't have to worry about patchwork. So, you know, it's up to the citizens and it's just what you want. You know, we, we serve the citizens and I know the people that I've spoken with in my precinct, um, of course, they want to be conservative, which we've been responsible and, and conservative since I've been on the council. But they also don't mind spending a little bit more to have nice things and to have a good quality of life for their families here in Bellmead. Uh, so it's, uh, you have to do, you have to be real strategic when you're planning. And I encourage people to come out to the council meetings. You know, we, ha we got to have more. Uh, city participation to let us know what you want. You know, I, I walk and I talk to people, I get stopped and I answer the questions. Uh, but I'm looking at the audience now, it's just a handful of people. And it's normally the same people that show up at the council meetings, right, with the exception of a few. Um, but we just have to be strategic in our planning. I think we can be conservative. That's where also we're grants coming in and getting grants to help modernize everything, then we ain't spending out of the city budget because the grant's helping us. But you also gotta help spend some money to improve the city and go forward. Otherwise, we're gonna be sitting in 1966 forever. We gotta get modernized and move forward. Without people like Miss Evans, Mr. Yost, you, you got them to look at your budget and they do a great job. They're gonna tell us where you can spend and where you can't spend and where they think the great idea is gonna be. If we feel that it's a great idea, if I'm elected to council, if it's good, I'm gonna vote for it. If it's bad, I'm gonna say nay. It's just a matter of taking the opinion from the city employees and going forward from there. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, early voting is going to be April 19th through the 27th at the city hall. If you go to bellmead.com, you can find out all of the detailed information about when, where, and how to vote. The times and locations are also posted at the City Hall. And again, bellmead.com is a great resource as well as the Facebook page. So again, early voting April 19th through the 27th. And Election Day is May the 1st. And you vote right here in the Civic Center from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on May the 1st. Uh, so thank you, each and every one of you. Brian Wingett running for Precinct 5, Travis Gibson, Precinct 2, and Melvin Cleveland also running in Precinct 2. Gentlemen, I think you did exceptionally well. We appreciate your participation, taking the time to answer these questions. Now we need to also thank the folks that put this all together. Uh, the city manager, Yo Zachary, was instrumental, as well as the assistant city manager, Karen Evans, and Melinda Adams, the Director of Community Development, set all of this up for us. So uh, they're all here tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. And I would encourage everybody here, uh, including the candidates, to hang around for a few minutes. We've got some refreshments over here, mix and mingle, answer questions if anybody didn't get a chance to ask. And uh, again, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for those watching online. And we appreciate your time, and gentlemen, best of luck.